Where's Adam Warlock? All right, did you get that out of your system? <laughs> yes. I think he's still in that cocoon, right? Yeah, it takes a while. But where is the, the cocoon? Question. Those gold people, it's going to take a while. Those gold people who I don't remember the names of. Gold Tilda Swinton. I enjoyed Guardians 2, <laughs> but in hindsight, I remember very little of it. <laughs> I yeah, love same. gold. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll cut the intro there. Did the podcast start yet? <laughs> Welcome to Film House, everybody. Uh, this week's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN and ZipRecruiter. Uh, thanks, ExpressVPN and ZipRecruiter, for bringing us here this week. I've got my friends Elise, James, and Adam. My name is we Daniel. Well, That's we're like the second or third time you said that. Yeah, to me. he likes to tell you that he doesn't care about you when secretly he when cares we're about friends, you. We'll, you, name into his you will skin. know. You will know when we're friends. Oh, man. I won't tell you, but you'll know it. Someday I hope to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. I like the surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this past weekend was uh, pretty huge for pop culture. Uh, one of the most exciting weekends I can remember in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, Ugly Dolls came out, I that, think. Uh, that's this really? weekend. Oh, I don't know. Who cares? You know what I love what about is an Ugly, ugly doll? Dolls? There is, there's a bunch of posters, and probably L.A. is the only place where you really see them, but L.A. will have large walls, and they'll litter the walls with posters for movies you're never going to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have Ugly Dolls posters, and Ugly Dolls does my favorite thing that shitty movies do for their marketing, where it's a poster, and it goes, meet so-and-so. And it just says, like, yeah. meet Caleb. And it's and, just a, it's just not yeah. even one of the ugly doll characters. Mm-hmm. It's just like a regular human being with like blonde hair mm-hmm. that looks like he was made in a South Korea animation farm. <laughs> the ugly, and, he, and I'm like, okay, I yeah. met him, and now it means nothing to me. Here's my problem with the ugly dolls. They look like abominations. Yep. They should have names that match. Like one of them well, should be called like Meat Rape Face. Right. And then you know he's Cleft there. Foot. They, they look <laughs> like yeah, abominations, lip. but they don't look. Ugly enough. I would say they don't no. look yeah, ugly. They're they're ugly dolls. They, should no do, hair. they should just take the a, the characters from that movie nine. Uh-huh. Those yeah, are yeah. ugly dolls. Yes. To answer your question, Dan, an ugly doll is whatever it needs to be as long as it looks like shit. <laughs> okay. See, they're not that ugly. They're yeah. not. They're quite cute. Oh, yeah, Ali Baba pictures. That's because, as I learned, beauty is okay. subjective. Well, I, I thought that Dog's Journey movie came out already too and I've been seeing posters for that everywhere it's like that other that, dog movie Alpha I think that dog movie is yeah. playing us because everyone <laughs> saw that trailer and everyone went it showed the whole movie I, every time I saw it someone in the theater goes it showed the whole movie yeah, yeah. and I, they'd also be crying like Dan's wife would be in tears yeah. right but it just showed the whole movie it's because Except test, test audience I saw a new commercial for it uh-huh. I they're, think it may be multiple stories they're not ugly at all I'm I'm no, guessing it's it's multiple stories because there's multiple dog posters now. That's what I thought and, too. And I know that because I photoshopped a hand holding a jar of peanut butter. I know, implying because, that the dog was going <laughs> to lick the dick. Because every fucking That's shot so in town looks is it's by the way the laziest poster in the world next to Meet the Uggos or whatever this movie's called. <laughs> but like it is it is it's the bare minimum white background, dog shot and they added uh, the, the laziest drop shadow effect in Photoshop and then just a couple of feet where it looks yeah. like someone's getting Is their fucking Caleb? pussy that's licked. That's who we, who we met. <laughs> okay. That's who I met on their poster. That's cool. They all have I wasn't going to see it. That's what I was thinking. Wow. I wasn't going to see it because I was like, but the, this movie's going to be filled with strangers. Mm-hmm. But now that I saw that poster, I was like, well, I've met him. <laughs> so. Wow. It's mm. like the emoji movie, but Somehow less. Well, Dan, this is what you wanted to talk about, right? Yeah, I still don't uh, know what an ugly doll is. We'll I find think it's out. an actual toy, right? It's this is just like a licensed thing. I feel like someone was making these on Etsy. Who's making this? A movie? couple years ago or something like that. Wasn't this like a Reddit post where like Probably. I make ugly dolls, and then someone said we would love to make Here's your, your then film. We're gonna find out yeah. three days before this movie releases that that person was a Christian scientist and they let their child die because they didn't want to <laughs> give them a doctor's appointment or whatever. Those are the kind of dolls that would be filled with human hair, you know? Mm-hmm. Like some Is that more makes. affordable or less? <laughs> I just They just showed less. the shot where one of the ugly dolls clearly dies. Be Story. brave, uh, Alibaba Studios, and do a Toy Story <laughs> 3 wouldn't. Don't there <laughs> a bunch of, fucking die. There's like a bunch of famous people in this too. Sure. I'm sure we'll get it run. There we go. Whatever. Oh, that's just the Aubrey Plaza was Lazy hey. Cat or whatever. Everyone was Kelly Clarkson. Clarkson as Moxie. Who? Nick Jonas as Lou. Pitbull <laughs> as Ugly Dog. Sure, man. <laughs> that Man-Man. person. Janelle Monae? Come on. Blake Shelton is Ox. Whatever, man. See? Because his is name is Ox. His eyes are Ox. Movie details. I, they See? probably just... So they, they have that app Cameo where you can book famous celebrities to say nice things or whatever. 
can they just do that with these actors now? <laughs> <laughs> like Lizzo. Yeah. Like, hey, Lizzo, can you just just say, I'm an ugly doll, my name's Pete. And they're like, uh, sure, here you go. And they're like, we got him in the movie. What are we yeah. talking about today, Dan? Oh, yeah. This, Wait, yeah, this like is the part GTA where Bruce would be like. yelling at everybody. Yeah, well, um, he's Bruce not isn't here. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His reign of terror is Well, I was going to say, we can't have nice things because we, yeah. had, we had Game of Thrones and we had Endgame and all uh-huh. we can do is bitch about other things. And like, great things come in threes, Sonic. Dan. Great things come yeah. in threes. Well, so we Sonic got... First, or do you want to recap yeah. Avengers? No, let, let, let's briefly... Uh, did you guys do this on Dude Super Party? I think someone said that. Did we talk through all of the trailer? No, we didn't get into the minutiae of the trailer. <laughs> no, we did discuss Sonic. We didn't go Sonic. frame by frame. Okay. Oh, should I slow it down? Sh- I mean, you, <laughs> you should try, but it's only going to run at normal speed because it's Sonic. He's faster than the speed of light. What's the song? How's the song go? Oh, it's Gangster's right. Paradise, man. I like how he warms up. You can't up. hide. You can reach the other side. No, it's the other one. The, the Urkel one. The too fast. When you lose your mind. Sonic boom. Sonic boom. So someone just needs to recut this trailer with mm-hmm. Sonic boom from Sega CD, mm-hmm. and everyone will see that this movie's going to be great. Why don't Does anyone they, know what he's talking about? Why no, why don't they do the thing mm-hmm. that they... <laughs> someone posted a video like, this would have made... Logan so much better and is Logan running through the woods and then they started playing the X-Men cartoon theme what at least was it you who posted that the person who did the math to figure out how many babies Sonic killed no I wish I had been <laughs> wait how's that did, who did, he, like, did a that? power out I saw the same yeah, thing yeah cause he, he threw out the power they uh-huh. say that he, he knocked out the power in the entire Pacific Northwest so like a little life. baby that was on the life support, support. Basically, like support. All, the, mm-hmm. all the security functions that a hospital would need to mm-hmm. keep babies alive <laughs> someone did the math and figured out how many <laughs> like 58 cool. babies or something just by running bad so the yeah. subtitle for this film was Sonic Baby Killer yeah, yeah. sweet that's why they call him Robotnik or whatever they're going to call Jim Carrey. What do you think? They're going to call him like... The abortionist. <sighs> no, they're going to call Abortion him something face. else, right? They're going to call him Eggman, Eggman. probably? Or, well, who knows? I don't know. He'll be he'll be like, like Eggmanzo or whatever for this. But then at the end he'll Manstein. go, call me Robotnik. That's what I'll do at the yeah. end. And they'll use my voice that uh-huh. I just did that recording of right now. And then Elise will stand up and Actually go, where's confused. Adam Warlock? <laughs> <laughs> the pressing question I am always wondering, he, I bet his name will be like Robotnikski or something. Mm-hmm. Sure. We could probably look it up on IMDb, but why waste the calories? <laughs> I'll do it. No, please don't. I think okay. it just says Robotnik. I have a theory I about this trailer. Gosh. Let's hear it. In that the way that Game of Thrones... Avenger or uh, Marvel Universe will doctor footage for trailers <laughs> sure. so that way we don't get spoilers. I think that's what's ha- clearly happening in this trailer. You think they filmed all of the trailer to trick people into thinking this was movie bad. was gonna not be what we wanted it to be? I think they're probably leaning into the spectacle of it being bad to get attention for it online. Snakes on the plane style? I don't know. I mean, do people, if you go out of your way to make a bad movie, it ends up being like a trauma or an asylum movie, right? Sure. This one looks like they genuinely tried to make something it people really, would watch. Like, but people are talking like about a, it though. From a pure a design lot. Lot. perspective, look at how his mouth just ex- just floats mm-hmm. beneath his nose. Like it has no, it doesn't fit into the face no. anywhere. Yeah. It's just this thing that just floats. Looks like he's got a Werther's original nose. stuck up. Once in again, there. this is you're doing the voice of the executive right now. <laughs> who's yelling at the Korean animator, and it's just all buzzes and whistles. Mm. That's all, he goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you're like, fix it. And he goes, and he just kept going. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the director, Jeff Fowler, has one film, one short film under his belt okay. called Gopher Broke, which is oh, a, a I get gopher, it. yeah. Oh. I forget if it was like Ricky or Elliot um, from Internet Today, friends of the channel, uh, was decrying nepotism. Yeah, for, I think he's from Miller's buddy. Is, is oh, my well, best yeah. guess. Oh, come on. But come on. This is the entertainment industry. Sure. I love those guys, but come on. This is the entertainment industry. <laughs> it's <laughs> all nepotism is what you mean? Literally no one has ever been hired based on their merits <laughs> in the entertainment <laughs> industry. Sure. At best, you're good at something, but then you also know the person who is doing the hiring. Yeah. For sure. Never. Never have I. I, mean, I think there's one time where I applied for a job cold turkey you, and then heard back. You were friends with Bruce. You went to high school with Dan. Yep. Yep. I'm your wife. Yep, exactly. And I'm Adam's your secret it. lover. <laughs> You're looking at nepotism. <laughs> I mean. I, it's, it is, no, James is absolutely right. So, you know, it's like you think Drew Barrymore got by on her merit. <laughs> like, 
No, she learned on the job. <laughs> <Yeah>. She showed <laughs> David Letterman her boobs, and the whole world opened up. I mean, it was. I, um, it's. Yeah. I, I I just want to say real quick that I don't begrudge anyone for being involved in this. <laughs> no, not even the six writers no, or five writers. Even the prospect, the prospect of in 2019 making a Sonic movie, it should just be a cash grab. Honestly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anything else should be a cash grab. I just think they did a bad job making it a cash grab. Mm-hmm. That shot of him wasn't terrible. Yeah. Shot of Robotnik? Of the shot of Sonic. Oh. Like, oh, because it was like Robotnik. an overhead. This part doesn't make sense. No, I don't mind Robotnik yeah. at all in the whole trailer. I think it's fine. It's this just is, the missiles be going at least like No, 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 because he's him. he's learning to control the speed force dog. Yeah. Um, and this is probably towards the end of the movie when he's got f- mm-hmm. complete control over the speed force because as you can see, Robotnik has now changed his costume into more. He's going to transform slowly mm-hmm. over time into the more the Robotnik that we know. And he also had a giant flying machine which he has in the games. And so he fires all those missiles, think he's going to get Sonic, but then Sonic taps into his true speed force and then freezes time. That's my how fast My only goes. fear is it's not going to be so bad that it's... Yeah. I think it's going to be... Because we live in the day and age where you can just make a passable thing mm-hmm. and you go, oh, I felt nothing. Yeah. But time has moved forward, so I'm not angry. Yeah. And I didn't hate myself when it was all done, so... Okay, and I was full of popcorn and uh, carbonated water, oh, so everything's fine. Best part, dog. What? what was the best the part? The teaser at the end. Yeah, what was f- that? You, you haven't seen the end tag? Oh. Uh, I'll wait. Oh, yeah, okay. It's Come my on. favorite shot of the whole trailer. It's, well, and it's the best looking shot because it's going to yeah. be walking the last away shot from the, the guy that's got a This is going to be bag. like when Rhino and Spider Man are fighting. <laughs> and what was that? That's a See? flash of Dr. What? Robotnik. What was that? See, in his portals, all the things I said. Yep. Dr. Robotnik, all his portals. Then he sent to that. The Mushroom Land. This, oh yeah, he does look. <laughs> to meet Sonic Mario. Place. From, the from end. Uh, <laughs> first level of Sonic and Knuckles, guys. That's it. We're looking at it. Sure, man. Whatever you want. <laughs> Are there chili I, dogs in this fine. movie? I just. I think. What? Are there chili dogs? Well, who cares? Chili I mean, dogs is cartoon. Game. Yeah, that's not really a video game. As they clearly stated, as in one of the title cards, like every hero has a genesis. Because the people making this movie had never played any other system. Well, except that in Europe, it's every hero has a Mega Drive. Right. Or <laughs> I guess maybe in Japan, it's like every hero has a Dreamcast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a problem with bad movies. I have a problem with bad, boring movies. And I worry that this might be a boring movie. You think it's going to be Because even like this, the second Jurassic World movie, I tried watching and I was just bored. Yeah. Um, but I can appreciate something that's like kind of bad, but is it, at it least is like, like Justice League... I still don't feel as bo- a boring movie. I just, I just hope I don't it, even think it has it's that a message, bad. You know, <laughs> I hope it's a lot of this. Yeah. What the s- global the warming? POV global baby. warming is real. Okay. Yeah, there's a real message. political message. Uh, the shoes he's gone through. Yeah. So he's a he's got a foot fetish. He loves he's, cassette tapes, and then he listens to gangsters. I mean, paradise. the only you know who can disprove the Earth flat theory. Sonic. Dr. Robotnik. Oh. Okay. Every uh, time, no, I was kidding. It's not. Every time they show his body, though, I'm waiting for his dick to flop out. <laughs> That's the only problem is that, like, it looks a little too human. Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. Don't they go inside the, the hedgehog? I mean, uh, yeah, but you should still see the flap, like sure. the sheath. Okay. I, I'm just, he, yes. It, they're, they're, already, they're already making him humanoid, so I'm not really worried. The problem is it's a little too close to humanoid that I, maybe this is good for somebody. People want this. And that's but, okay. Yeah, this you, one you dude did the corrected yeah, and it's version. So much sure. better. He did it for a frame. Edward Pun. I really like that. Um, but yeah, he's it's what he's, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be going down the uh, the Pokemon Detective Pikachu route. Yeah, which everyone seems to be okay with. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they have time? No. They just change the model, no. and then they just <laughs> give him skinny legs, and then hit hit that hit that render button real fast. <laughs> I was telling James yeah. this, but I feel really bad for Ben Schwartz. Who I think is do- doing a pretty good delivery and performance as Sonic from what we've seen from the trailer, mm-hmm. and you know he's trying to be enthusiastic about the movie. So on his Instagram, he's posting the new poster and stuff, and all the comments are like, "Dude, love you, but this trailer looks bad." Yeah. And it's it's you know it's horrible because like if we were I was saying to him and and I think you kind of agreed he's like if, James. Uh, to this one this guy look at him he's got a name I just told you, you uh, James. He's gonna. Uh, I, if you were asked to do, if you were a, a up and coming talent, and you were asked to do the voice of Sonic yes, in a movie, I yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, he um, has no effect on the story or the no, quality of the movie. No, also, I or the character design or anything. I don't know. Actors and other people have done far worse things. 
than a voice and then moved on sure. with their careers, no problem. They just go, yeah, I got paid, whatever. We've all got an ugly doll. We've all been in a doom. Well, the only thing that makes me feel bad about Ben Schwartz is that he has expressed interest in at least being like in the gaming sphere. Like yeah. he, he likes video he likes games. games. He's mm-hmm. tweeted and st- talks cool. about, or we met him one time and, and he, he was telling about us about Switch how he was stuff. playing Breath yeah. of the Wild and going crazy for it and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so he's it like, is he's unfortunate. He's like a real gamer girl. <laughs> oh, I like that about it. It's just, it's just it, it, it probably feels worse for him because he's like, oh, yeah, I'll be Sonic. That's yeah, awesome. Like a and lifetime then he's like, dream come true. I mean, I guess you read the script at a certain point. And you're like, oh, this sucks. But I mean, it's also, it's a. No, you get a good payday. I don't begrudge no, anyone can, for taking it, a paycheck. Did Jim this Carrey movie. save it, though? Like, Jim hey. Carrey's great. Jim Carrey's great. And he it feels like traditional classic Jim Carrey sure. that we're watching. Well, I mean, look, the source material is a blue thing that runs from the left to the right. Yes. Thank so. You. Sometimes up. Sometimes up, sometimes it, forward. And sometimes you don't even run. There's a lot of puzzles in those games. It is a platformer. There, People forget that. There is a killer whale at one point. <laughs> but I'm just saying, when the source material is out, unless you got Phil Lord and Chris Miller making this movie, you're going to get a, a pretty meh, milk toast sort of film. Do you think there's a scene yes. where um, James Marsden has Sonic in that bag and they're in downtown of whatever populous city they're in, Vancouver. New York or whatever, Van- Van- downtown Vancouver. <laughs> it's where they shot it. And they go past a hot dog vendor and James Marsden gets Sonic a chili cheese dog. There will definitely be references to chili dogs. Do you think that's mm-hmm. how it plays out though? In the city, they the hot dog vendor. <laughs> yes, he'll probably walk by. And like he, he so, hands it to Sonic in the while Sonic's in his briefcase or whatever. I think what's probably gonna happen is he's gonna, they're gonna be walking down they're gonna go past the chili dog stand. Mm. You will get it, maybe a shot or of the bag going, yeah. and then James <laughs> Marston will be in the midst of a conversation with Sonic, like, oh, what are, do we just have to stick together? Yeah, okay, yeah. Sonic? Yeah. And then he'll look down, Sonic, Sonic, and then it'll be and then it'll be Sonic going, ow, yeah. and is with his scary mouth mm-hmm. putting it, and we'll see all his teeth <laughs> crunching yeah. in, snapping yeah. through chili it. chili in between them. Yeah. He also deep throats it like a co-ed. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I don't. I mean, there's also gonna be a really beautiful part where <coughs> we meet the, the original Tails. creator of Sonic, uh, like uh, the, I forget his name, and we Mr. won't. Mr. Sega? Mr. Sega will walk by, and he'll have a cameo, and then no one will notice. Yeah, so, so that's him right there. Yeah, might as well be. Gotta go fast, he'll say. <laughs> so, <I> actually, think <laughs> he walks by <laughs> an old white-haired man <laughs> with a mustache um, who drew Sonic. In a, in James a has a true talent for guessing the plots of movies before they're out. Can you tell us the plot of this film? Uh, yeah, I mentioned it on Dude Soup, but basically uh, what's going to happen mm, is that Dr. Robotnik is a scientist who will be working on some sort of new technology that may or may not end up being powered by a Chaos Emerald. That technology will bring Sonic into this world. A.K.A. Baby Killer. A.K.A. the Baby Killer. <laughs> Sonic will maybe have a little time to get used to this realm. Oh, yeah, because he's collecting a bunch of junk in his treehouse. Yeah. Mostly shoes because of his fetish. And so, and so, but he's been pulled from his world where all, ever, all the animals are like him. Maybe even some echidnas. Oh. Um, Heart. And now Dr. Robotnik is like, oh my goodness, this is the, the he's this is the source of my experiment, so I need mm-hmm. to recapture him. And then he will pursue him relentlessly, using the military as cover. But then by the end of the movie, he will be blasted back into Sonic's realm. And that's why he's in the mushroom level from Sonic and Knuckles, and he looks like uh, Eggman. That's the plot of the movie. Maybe Sonic's cool. trying to run fast enough to get back to his world. <gasps> What if I'm his sorry, world's the future and he has to run around the planet fast enough to spin it? Don't bring time travel into this. Dude, keep it serious. He runs from the left to the right. That's all he does. And then he jumps. He goes up. Was jumps, that east or west? He jumps on the plunger and the animals come out. That's what? the story. That's the end of the levels. That's it. That's what you, and, then, and then the sign comes down and you keep jumping and keep spinning it. If there's a point where he's in uh, Marble Zone... And he pushes the thing, mm-hmm. but then the, the pixel drops down, so then he can still keep doing the push animation mm-hmm. while he's moving through the level. I will be, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. My, my <clears> biggest <throat> question is yet to be answered by this trailer, and this is why it, it gets my $7.50. Does he wear soaps? It doesn't the, appear the, as though he does. I, not in the trailer, no. I must mm-hmm. go see the feature film to see if he has shoes capable of grinding on rails circa <laughs> 1999. <laughs> he also doesn't wear gloves. His hands are just white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're trying to get away from the vaudevillian. Sure, well, I don't want to look they ridiculous. Said it, yeah, they said it. That yeah, it, that looks too silly. Fancy. Yeah, but it I, wasn't believable. 
<laughs> I think that Sonic should have worn gloves. Like he has like severe OCD or something. That would have been cool, yeah. And they're always dirty. Yeah. Also, he's, he likes to smell farts. That'd be funny. And Bison's confused. What if he What if he stops by Games Done Quick and no one recognizes him? <laughs> Wait, who's Sonic or and then that, Jim Carrey? That busty girl gets out of the seat and then he's, he and then you just see a blue flash come in and a <laughs> yeah. sniff and then a blue flash go away. And, and be like, whoa, blue ice. Wow. Okay. Anyway, I can't yeah. wait. Personally, I can't so wait. When does it come out, Dan? When does this, this November. November? It should have said you, you have to wait, bud. Yeah. Uh, hey, save the save the Thanksgiving turkey because I know what I'm gonna be thankful for. Sonic. <laughs> and then all the reviews are gonna come out and say, put this turkey back in the oven because it's nice. a hedgehog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I uh, did worry that when Sonic took the uh, power out, that my Internet online privacy could have been compromised. <laughs> that might be a is, bad point. Is protecting your internet privacy important to you, Elise? It is, Dan. If you're anything like me, you do as much shopping as possible online. Did you know that without a VPN, your credit card information is wide open to hackers while you're shopping online? If a hacker discovers your information online, they can spend your money and access your shopping accounts, all because you didn't have ExpressVPN protection. ExpressVPN encrypts your internet data, preventing others from sniffing your information over the network. You can shop online with peace of mind thanks to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN has the fastest speeds, consistently faster than other VPN providers. They have server locations in 94 countries, giving you plenty of options to choose from. ExpressVPN has apps for every device, Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, router, and more. It is extremely easy to use, connect with just one click. This is internet without restrictions. Securely stream or download content from anywhere, anytime. ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I use ExpressVPN when I shop online because I care about protecting my data from snoops and hackers. I feel safer and more secure knowing that I'm protected by ExpressVPN. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box. So go to expressvpn.com slash filmhouse. Take back your internet privacy today with ExpressVPN. And thanks again to ExpressVPN for bringing us here this week to talk about Sonic. I always think every time I, I pay my I pay my bills, I go, thank you to the sponsors. Let me talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> ExpressVPN is like, if we knew you were talking about Sonic, we would not. <laughs> we would have, have absolutely pulled the funding, yes. Um, so, yeah, last week we talked about Avengers. I'd like to talk about it a little bit more this week because a lot of people wanted to know what the Willemses had to say about Avengers Endgame. <laughs> but at the end of the podcast, we did wonder, yeah. would it make a billion dollars? And it did. Oh, um, that was my worry. <laughs> you were really concerned about them. I was hoping it'd make its money back. <laughs> um, but up to today, <laughs> worldwide, they've got $1.63 billion. <laughs> it's a fucking absurd. It's recorded on a Thursday. Um, so yeah. Yeah, It'll what be do you another... Think? Give it the weekend. Up to know, two. Drop the kids off at summer camp, and then um, go see that movie again. It brought, broke all kinds of records. I don't especially want to read through them, but it's at number ones. It's the biggest time travel movie of all time, you guys. Don't do that. No? Don't don't break it down when it's like, biggest movie opening on a weekend starring Tom yeah. Hardy. <laughs> There's biggest a lot of movie those. starring a guy who wears a gold hand glove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Box Office Mojo does that, yeah, but it's say there. It made more money than yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, think, yeah. Well, Catholic Church still has a lot. I mean, if it made more yeah, than Passion of the Christ, that God Notre Dame movie. That. What? Yeah. Anyway. I mean, God made us and we make films. Jesus films. knocked over all those fucking stalls in the temple. That's he was pissed cool. off. He hated money. He burned down Notre Dame, too. He did. Actually, I think it was a, a guy in a smoke break. Oh, I, fuck. Seems to be the, uh, the consensus that the... at the moment. Anyway, Endgame yeah. made anyway. a shit ton of money. Uh, we can talk a little bit about maybe what we think is next for the MCU. But first, what did you guys think about Endgame? Did it live up to your hype? Did you hate it, Elise? I loved it. I thought it was great. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, Big it's, surprise. Just, it's just such a feat in filmmaking and storytelling to the conclusion of 22 movies, and then you're bringing it to this, and you're making it work in an organic way that nothing... There, there was one moment in the movie that I felt was a little bit contrived, and uh, I think... You know, there's a lot of people. I, I think that it, Marvel has a lot of great, a great cast now. They've got a great female cast, but they still use like, especially in this this movie, they use women as like props mm -hmm. in it. Are you talking about that it. one scene yes. where they all got together I, to protect Spidey? I mean, that <laughs> finally someone that, agrees. <laughs> that very much, but it's like 
you know, Captain Marvel's used just to transport. She's just a, a fairy to, to move things from one man to the next. And like, uh, you know, Black Widow's whole thing is just to make sure the, the men around her can be happy. And like, like <laughs> the women are just kind of like used as, you know, props. And which is like, whatever, that's a whole other thing. They're really cool in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, there's still like some shortcomings there that I think that Marvel... Uh, didn't really execute on well in bringing all these powerful women to the, into this movie. Is well, that, this is a man's story. Yeah, I mean, is, yeah. is that Marvel's fault or is it the women's fault? <laughs> they didn't try hard enough. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it, I think there was a little bit of like lacking in, in that mm-hmm. uh, department. How but it didn't away? ruin the movie for me. Fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. Screw nice, him. Nice, nice. Uh, I still wow. thought it was awesome. I loved... Uh, Hulk, I love. He was my favorite part of that movie. He was so funny smart, and so great. Smart Hulk. Yeah. He got I, short change at the end, though. Was he? I saw the film again and don't remember him doing anything in that big final fight. The scene. Big fight. He like doesn't he like go toe to toe with Thanos at one point? A uh, little bit. At some point, he got thrown really far away. Yeah. Was that I it? mean, his his goal in that whole thing was to snap the glove because he's yeah. the most powerful. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah. Because I mean, he basically got yeah. injured Gamma real bad before the fight started. I did think that Thor was really fun, mm. but I also kind of, on the flip side of that, while I thought it was funny and fun, he was just like so. They brought him. They brought him in Thor three, and in uh, um, Infinity, Infinity War. War to like such a badass mm. level that I was kind of like, oh, they're like reducing him a little he bit. He kind of had in the same, movie. a very similar story than he did in the last. Yeah. Movie. I was sort of not like I. Th- I felt Hulk was a really fun progression, especially comedically. Um, what else? Like, yeah, it, it's it's a weird situation where it's like I get that that they're trying to set up Guardians three too, so they're like retconning a little bit of like Gamora and him, so they can make that interesting. But I I don't really. I don't really care much about now Star Lord trying to regain his romance with Gamora. I'm like, oh, I don't really care about that. But that I like that that end battle scene where everyone finally comes together. It's like goosebumps. It was really cool. I feel like you can't top that for ever. No, yeah. they might know. not be able to. Just That's so well, I mean, awesome. All the time, like when you think about all that time you spent setting up a moment such that Captain America can use Thor's hammer as a weapon. Like, yeah. that's, you just can't recreate that other than if they did another Harry Potter. Like, like yeah. but even so, like, you need that kind of character building and set up and set up. And also the years and years of comic book history that kind of set all this up, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the only thing that could come close to a moment like that is... A nearly identical moment, but with the X Men and the Fantastic Four sure. and every other hero they can own yeah. walking mm-hmm. through. Well, portals. every every movie, anytime there's a team up, I, I realize this now. They've they've always done a really good job of combining powers. Mm-hmm. It's always like a, a a blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. But it's they set it up in Avengers where well, like team up moves. Well, like Thor Thor hits Captain America's shield, right? Mm-hmm. And then fast forward ten years or whatever, how long it's been? Seven years. Uh, he he does a move where he throws his uh, shield and yeah. then the hammer comes back and hits yeah. it and does the exact same thing mm-hmm. that happened in the first Avengers like but like like I said it's it's just such a quick thing I that I know it's really <laughs> fucking cool. Really uh, cool or like just cool stuff of Spider-Man riding me on there yeah. while carrying an Infinity Gauntlet where you're like that, that's just cool man that's good that's like just taking the cool stuff I read as a kid and we're finally catching yeah. up to Ultimate Alliance yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I hey, felt like switch. the fun and hijinks of the second act of them going back into past movies and situations mm-hmm. like the fact that it was it was fun and it served a purpose in terms of the plot was like great like I think we all kind of knew that they were going to go back in time into different Scenarios and it, like that was not a surprise when it started happening in the movie, but it was so fun to see it executed on and see like Captain America fighting himself mm-hmm. was so so good. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I just loved it. I I can do this all day. I I really liked the movie a lot. I, I would say that I guess I I did love it because it's three hours and to, for me it flew by. A couple of the things I was really hoping it would do, it didn't really do. Yeah, which is when as soon as you go. All right, we're introducing time travel. 22 movies in, we're introducing time travel. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I hope this is like a very controlled, logical way of doing so because time travel is such like generally 
narratively as like a super cop out thing. Yeah, it's a and disaster. I s- still feel like it was a cop out in see. this movie, but it was so that way we could experience a greatest hits kind of, with the exception of Thor two, but like a greatest hits <laughs> of the Marvel cinematic history. And for that reason, I was really excited. I was a little disappointed when they went back to do the Tony Stark Captain America in the 70s thing, because I was like, well, you never really, you never experienced this before. This isn't like touching on a moment Mm -hmm. that we know from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But it was Ray Kinsella playing baseball with his dad at the end of... uh Kevin Costner baseball movie. Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Water it was, World. It was I know us it was, getting to see Tony Stark share a great moment with his dad. I, yeah, I know, I know that was the purpose of it, but sure. I was still like, oh man, I wish there's, I mean, his dad was alive for a long time too. Like, I feel like sure. there could have been other moments that they maybe could have chosen that could have gotten him to have some catharsis. So I, I just was like, oh, okay. Oh, time travel. I'm excited to see what they do with it. And at the end I was like, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't the n- new best take on time travel I've seen in a movie which is a little little disappointing, but ultimately I was totally fine with it because I, I did love what they ended up doing in those moments and setting things up and then giving stuff. Um, couple things that I thought were shortcomings were Captain Marvel. I was like, oh, okay. She was not great in her own movie, but that's because they're saving her really good stuff for when she's, she, it's go time for her, but she is, Utterly an accessory. Well, they mm-hmm. shot this before they made her movie, so they didn't. I don't think they knew what to do with I her. Mean that, you know? Yeah, but I mean, Feige's doing that. It's been doing that this whole time, right? Like they've always had a plan, and they've always like. I mean, I think the perfect haven't they spoken example, about that? That was the shortcoming that, that they shot this stuff OP. first. Oh. And so that way, like, going back and then doing the Captain Marvel movie later was I when mean, they figured her out. Maybe, but it still mm-hmm. seems like that's an that's a producer oversight or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, the, she, if she's supposed to be our next big thing, I just, I'm not I'm not on the Captain Marvel train. She seems real boring. She seems real boring and is only overpowered when it's convenient. And they don't do a good job of explaining why she's underpowered when it's most necessary. It, they don't actually define her powers very yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's cool that she came bursting in to blow it, it up that ship. It was a really neat scene when she flies mm-hmm. through that spaceship. But then when she tried to punch Thanos, she couldn't. I could have sworn I saw an interview about this where they dis- they addressed all this, and it's because things were shot in I mean, reverse. Ma- yeah. I, well, they, don't but I'm it. still, like, yeah. they know what order they're going to shoot things sure, in. Sure. So, like, I mean, I'm not still... arguing with you. I'm just telling you what I saw. No, I know. I, whatever their reasoning is. Stop I think fighting it, with the I, men. I think <laughs> it was a misstep for Captain Marvel's character. Sure. She didn't really show any more any personality more so than she had shown in what? her own movie where she was just kind of supposed to be a novice yeah. to it all. And then in, I still am really unclear on her Power level, like I was hoping. Everyone is. I was hoping for a Black Panther type scenario where Black Panther movie came out, and then you saw how important getting that movie beforehand was to Infinity War, mm-hmm. because Wakanda is like the last line of defense of Earth, and it would make sense logically when you're watching Infinity War that it would be the last line of defense, and they'd fight that battle there, and that's where you get all the troops. But it really did feel like, like. That was what Captain Marvel was supposed to be for yeah. Endgame, and she wasn't. Like she would have really. been like, no. "Oh, I went out into the universe and I brought back like these other powers with me," or <laughs> I mean, she, or she came back with Adam Warlock. <laughs> yeah. the, the excuse bring, she brings a man to save <laughs> yeah. the, the excuse. <laughs> that the, ex- the excuse that they use <laughs> is that oh well, there's a lot of shit going on in the universe, ladies and gentlemen. So I have to focus on that. Except that we've already established that that. Thanos is a universal threat. And there's other intergalactic beings that are pretty invested in this battle, like Thor. He's an intergalactic <laughs> warrior who could theor- who has in the previous movies traveled from planet and realm to realm, like saving yeah. things, but then also still gets invested when the fight yeah. comes I, to Earth. I think that was my beef with their like one-off line of like explaining why she has to leave is yeah. like the most important thing is still going on here on Earth. Like yeah. I get people are sad on other planets and doing their was, you know. I took that as the line as like her reasoning why she wasn't there for past events. Yeah. Well, yeah. but then she still like when they have the five years later. It's like I'm busy. And then and then she, you she's know Black Widow is like what are we going to do? She's like she's like I got to go. I saw the haircut. I was like I like the haircut. I thought that was a cool new that's look character for her, development. No, that's yeah, it wasn't level. really. Oh. I'll yeah. say this: I did manageable. like Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow as an Iron yeah. person 
was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that it wasn't just Iron Man 3 level her screaming while she was in the suit and it was doing everything for her or whatever. That movie, whatever happened in that. But her mm -hmm. design was really cool. Were you anyone disappointed that there were no scrolls? I like Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. No, no, I, I know, but to come back. I'm just saying. I'm maybe there are scrolls. Maybe, there are maybe scrolls. she should have brought the scrolls, and then they could have pretended to be yeah. Thanos. We're here, but we don't he would have been powers. like, "I'm confused," and then he gets punched. Yeah. At the end. Yeah, uh, any one everything of them could be a scroll. Fine. But it's, yeah, basically, basically, I was like, "This may be some of the best stuff I've ever seen in a movie ever." Sure. Yeah. And then, but then there was other stuff that I was like, "Oh, just okay." So at worst, it was one of the best Marvel movies in the cinematic universe. And then at best, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a theater. Black Widow had one of my favorite lines, which is when she was like, I get raccoons, or I get emails from a raccoon. <laughs> yeah. I really liked. Yeah. He's not a raccoon. They're, they've always had good moments like that with Hawkeye and Black Widow have always had those things where like, I think like Black Widow's like losing her shit. He, or no, I think he was he was talking to, um, what is it, Scarlet Witch or something? He was in Ultron. And he's like, I don't know what's going on half the time, and I just yeah. go with it. Like, yeah. I shoot arrows, man. Yeah. We're fighting robots. Like, nothing makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> just like, there is there is a funny yeah. moment when they were like, we're going to test the going back in time serum, but we need someone who's reckless to test it. And <laughs> Hawkeye's like, or Ronan's like, I'll do it. And then so he goes back in time, and they're like, let's see. We need people to not interact, just walk around, not interfere with the world at all. So let's... Send him to his house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he hasn't seen his family in five years, at a time when everyone's home. <laughs> and the first thing he does is throw off everything and try and run into the house. Yeah. And luckily, he's pulled out of it. <laughs> like, it would have ruined everything right in the first moment. There was some, um, Adam from uh, Your Movie Sucks, did a, he did a pretty good review where it's just like, obviously, he points a lot of the, f he was more aware of the flaws that was going on with the time travel stuff than I was. I think some of it's been cleared up by the Russos, but other parts too where it's like, hey, Nebula, uh, maybe give us some info. Yeah. <laughs> like when you say things like, by the way, Thanos is also looking for the stone at this time. It's like, maybe, maybe we go to a different where? time. I know yeah. we don't have footage when? of that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe we I, get the power stone at a different time. Yep. Just like One last thing that just disappointed me slightly was I still think T'Challa is the least interesting mm -hmm. member of Wakanda. That's how I felt watching Black Panther. Mm -hmm. I was way more invested in his family and everyone around him sure. than Baku. I was in him. And then when he showed up again, I was like, here we go. And I still feel like he's like, he's like, like, I'll handle this. And then he immediately drops the call. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hawkeye's been running with it for the last three and a half hours. And he's like, I'll handle this. Jumps, gets hit, drops it, and <laughs> stumbles away. I'm like, that's his contribution. Uh, oh, well. Yeah. It's I had an amazing time. Yeah. yeah like, when, I, when Peter Parker uh, sees Iron Man again, yeah. it's a really oh, nice moment. So sweet. Yeah, yeah. I, when, he's, when he's getting hugged, he goes, this is nice. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't yeah. get a lot of dad hugs. Yeah. yeah. I almost I almost wish that they were like, and that's the end. And then they just start everything over <laughs> again with some I mean, new they're, they're kind of stuff. doing that now. We were, we were just talking before this whole thing started. Fareed came in and he's like, Secret Wars, Secret. baby. Here it goes. And we're like, well, I don't I mean, mm -hmm. so the rule is... They they talk about it, but I, I guess it was never super clear. Maybe you guys can help me out here. All the stones got returned to bring balance or whatever, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But because of things they did in the past, it created diverging timelines. So like Loki getting the the space stone and phasing out of there. Yeah, that is now a new timeline. Yeah. So then yeah. and then when they went, but it's still a tr timeline that is true to that timeline. I think the cons the the ancient one's concern was what happens when you remove the stone from that timeline gotcha. and then place it in a new timeline. So yes, it is different than it may have been, but it probably would have been different for other reasons anyway. So Loki teleporting away is not as dramatic as them having fully removed the thing forever. Yeah. But now we now we have a multiverse, so that's going to be their way of... I mean, they pretty much did it with Gamora. We're like, we brought Gamora back. She's just from a different mm -hmm. realm or whatever multiverse yeah if you think about stuff there's way more discrepancies that happened anyway like um like captain america telling all the hydra dudes that he's hydra might right. potentially influence that timeline a little bit when they run into the captain america who lost the fight later and they're right. like hey hydra right buddy he's like 
What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that might Give somewhat the affect the events yeah. of Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony! Tony! <laughs> yeah. oh, Let's be friends forever! <laughs> that's my beef with time travel in general. I think it opens up too many questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't button them all up, and it just muddies everything. The questions raise questions, mm-hmm. and like... Mm-hmm. That being said, I'm glad that when I sat down to watch the movie to go like, all right, let's see how they resolve this. They show up, get to Thanos, and he's like, I destroyed a man, dog. <laughs> I was like, oh, that made me feel really very good. compelled as a viewer to mm-hmm. see how they were going to get out of this situation. Yeah, uh, You guys already discussed it, right? But the fact that Peter Parker's five years younger yeah. than everyone else in that, high school. I still think all of the people that are in the movie, like all of his friends must have also disappeared but that's, and gotten that's tested. lame. That's kind of lame. They have to do that because in the, yeah, the, 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 the far, the far yeah, from home trailer. But that's kind of yeah, lame, right? Ones. That's yeah. it's kind of lame. It's like Mary Jane, Flash Thompson. Fat kid. <laughs> yeah. It, it feels like it may play into the fact that you have people like Mysterio showing up, though. Right. There's right. been five years for him to feel like there's a hole in the hero realm or whatever, so he needs to show up. Which yeah. Marvel character would you say you are? Because I was talking with, with Joel about this. Mm-hmm. Who did Joel say he was? I don't remember. Nebula. Yeah. No. no. Oh, didn't he follow Pepper up pots? in text? I think I, he followed up I in think text. I'm Spider-Man's friend. <laughs> More specifically, the kid who drops the Death Star. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't remember his name. Uh oh. Jacob. His name's Jacob in real life. Jacob a- Alloy. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm like the Rocket Raccoon of the group. Man. Mm, yeah. I what? don't know about that. I'm short and hairy, and you I got all like these. James these, Gunn's brother. I got all these I quips. <laughs> James Gunn. I got a lot of things to talk about. I don't know about that. Also, Groot set out the end of this movie too. Oh, Joel said he's Grandmaster. Mm, I don't know about that. What the fuck is I that? I don't know about that. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Oh. Dan, you're like Doctor Strange, I'd say. I'll be Doctor Strange. I like the Hulk. Can I be the Hulk? Sure. I get my arm. Sure. Yeah. You're, Who would I be? I like Captain America. Mm. He's not that good. But the one in the past timeline that gets his shit pushed in. He's Hydra Captain America. Oh, yeah, you're Hydra. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're that little German Hydra dude who gets stuck in the you computer. You don't think I'm Star-Lord? <laughs> you don't Zola? think I'm a playful, sure. a playful rogue like Star-Lord? I, I, Star-Lord, Star- with each Star-Lord. new installment, I, I like him less. Agree. Um, yeah. Like, Here, here's another question. They're all from Grace, Chris Pratt. If, if we ever get to talk to Feige at any point, we or won't. Russo Brothers, I know we won't, but Restraining orders. someone brought up this question, which is a great one. So in Endgame, they bring everyone back, right? And they seem to come back from where they were dusted. Mm -hmm, Yeah. So I was like, there's a lot of planes and helicopters going down at the end of Infinity War. So imagine you're the Mm co-pilot and you look over, your pilot's going, you're like, Frank! And then it crashes and dies. So those guys aren't coming back. But then what happens if they got dusted in a, a flight? And they're like, wow, I'm back. Ah! Yeah. Just fall. Like, shouldn't there just be bodies falling? Well, Thanos, I mean, if you if you go back and you watch Infinity War, mm-hmm. there's a point where Thanos goes, half of everyone except for on planes. And then he snaps. Oh. <laughs> like, it's real subtle. Gotcha. But then he snaps, and he's, but it's like kind of like, yeah. you can barely see because his lips are so big. Uh-huh. But yeah. he, got, he goes, like, half of everyone except for on planes. And uh-huh. Can I snaps. just say, you guys all know that the... The Scarlet Witch and Vision stuff is my mm-hmm. least favorite thing yeah. in the Marvel Division, Universe. Please. I thank God he wasn't in that movie. And he's coming back movie. somehow. Yeah, that, that was the other thing too. They have the funeral for Tony. Nothing for Black Widow. Yeah, nothing no, for Vision. Yeah. And, I think I think you can see Vision's corpse like next to a dumpster. <laughs> and floating. He's not land. human. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yami. You guys know Yami. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She thinks that, and I, I kind of agree with her that they're gonna that there's gonna be a thing where like maybe even in Guardians where they like go f- to rescue her. Like, she doesn't think that Black Widow's permanently dead. Oh, really? Well, Black no, Widow does have a movie. Yeah, it's but supposed to be it's a prequel. prequel. Maybe. I mean, who knows? It could be It could be Hulk and Hawkeye going to, like, try to find Black Widow. I don't know. Because Hulk in the movie did say he tried to bring her back, but yeah. couldn't. I mean, the, the technology they have to go back and bring people into their timeline exists. It, just, didn't, it look, didn't go anywhere. It wasn't destroyed. The problem with Tantra, every it. movie after this is like, well, why don't we just go back in time and fix it? Let's go get Tony. It like, takes the stakes out of things. Yeah. I, I am just going to say this. Um, the Skull. WandaVision show will have, in an entire season, I'm going to say 10 minutes of Vision in the Vision makeup. The rest oh. of it is going to be him just mm. as, what's his face, the actor? Paul Bettany. Paul, Paul Bettany. Bettany. Yeah. It's just going to be Paul Bettany. Mm. Okay. There's going to come up with some sort of excuse. Mm-hmm. We're undercover. 
oh, we have to go in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> Vancouver, more specifically, to hide out. <laughs> or because if S.H.I.E.L.D. finds out you're alive, Vision, we're going to be, oh, so you have to be a regular guy, okay? Sure. Yes, I will. And then and then Paul Bettany uh, doesn't have to sit in the makeup chair every single day, and they don't have to pay for that makeup. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the Falcon Winter Soldier show might be watchable. Yeah. yeah. Loki, the show. They have a good rapport. I love Loki. Yeah. I, I would have liked more Loki in sure. this movie. I, I think Loki's great, but I also acknowledge that he's great given his relationship with Thor. Mm-hmm. I don't sure. know that I'm necessarily like, yeah, give me more of that Loki, just doing Loki stuff. Right. Tom uh, Hiddleston can be a lead, though. He's great. Listen, he's great. But I do think what makes Loki as good as Loki is is his relationship with Thor. And maybe They're, they would try to find a surrogate uh, foil to him like a, like just, the Phil Sethor. I'm just like what what is there to be now I'm not saying this in like a really super depressing morose way but like what's there to be excited about moving forward only because Iron Man Captain America basically out of it Hulk is more or less not really that interesting anymore just like his Hulk everyone is kinda, great every, Adam well no I'm not saying everyone everyone's arc is sort of complete mm-hmm. like I, I don't want to know more well, about Hulk he, I, he seemed to kind of find his catharsis and it's like that's beautiful. It's this done. Is, I, I think they're going to let all those guys rest for a while. That's what I figure. So it's yeah. like, as Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. is like, I never thought in this day and age that it's like, the movie I'm looking forward to the most is a Guardians of the Galaxy sequel. But after that, it's sort of like, all the shows and everything we talked about, it's like, they seem kind of, I, I guess it all comes down to what do they do with the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Like, I think that's going to take a while. Yeah, it's going to take them 10 years to build up to like making Doom, Dr. Doom, uh, an interesting villain. So. Oh, I think Doom's great. Yeah, they I are think, out of like. I mean, it's with Galactus. the stakes you've got with Thanos. Yeah, there's only a few characters that can need to bring thirty different characters together to stop them. Yeah, and I mean, they're all Fantastic Four villains or X Men villains, really. I mean, that's all they have, right? It's gonna have to be Galactus or Doctor Doom. Those are like the yeah. real big ones. And then what to what do with this Adam Warlock? <laughs> Adam <There's>, Warlock, <laughs> where was he? There's also <laughs> Kang. Kang's a Marvel villain that d- uh, deals with time travel. Who? And Kang. Krang. Kang. Yeah, exactly. Kang. He said it. He's not in Pol's Puzzle Quest. That's how you know. No, Craven the Hunter is though. Oh damn! And yeah. then you can also buy the Craven, <laughs> which is the support, which is his van that he drives. <laughs> It's not a joke. You're it's laughing. not? I don't know. Not a joke. I don't know if it's sadder. Thanos copter or the Craven van? Yeah. <laughs> Craven. van. I can see them bringing back Blade in a cool way, possibly. Like, there's That's a TV show, man. Yeah, Blade, I mean, Blade works well as a TV but show. But do you think they can get Wesley Snipes now? Do you think? If he, yeah, of course Every time he's so. dodging a prison sentence, <laughs> he's like, listen, Kevin. Mr. Feige, you don't have to pay your taxes. If the phone rings, he wait. He answers it. Okay. So yeah, there's definitely gonna be more Spider-Man. We know that, right? Yep. Uh, Black Panther two, Captain mm-hmm. Marvel two, Doctor Strange two, Ant Man and the Wasp two. Those what? are all it's, pretty much it's, guaranteed. It's Ants Man sends the wasps. Yeah, yeah. dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> Just everywhere. <laughs> Um, so the new shit, uh, the Eternals, I guess. I think they go to space a lot more. They use Guardians. Yeah. Oh no, D- James died. You, you haven't mentioned there? the most popular Marvel film, Shang Chi. Adam Venom. Oh. <laughs> that's it. That's it's it. just it, well that that's another. Yeah, they just go to space. I think it's all space stuff from now sure. on, except when Black Panther's on Earth. Oh, maybe Captain Marvel will show up for that. I, I'm just saying, like there, there's still so many weird like politics going on that you can't do interesting stuff like oh Spider-Man getting the symbiote suit that would be cool but oh, we've already the, we already we've already established Venom is a thing yeah, so yeah. yeah now we can't Sony fucked it up kind of but I mean it, to be fair going all the way back Marvel fucked it up because they were going they out of business it. and they had to sell the stuff well, and that's what, what they gotta do it's yeah. it's what kept them alive absolutely and also you well, know what to be fair the audience fucked it up because Venom made a shit ton of money and if that had <laughs> bombed like it should have then we wouldn't have to worry about it, any of this. It almost flopped, but then Bruce and I got D-Box seats. That's the problem. You pushed him over. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because you wanted to shake <laughs> when he says basey words. <laughs> Sorry about Venom. <laughs> Did you apologize for Venom? Michelle Williams apologizes uh-huh. to Tom Hardy at the end of Venom. Oh. She's sorry about Venom. Sorry about Venom. She's sorry. Oh. sorry about Venom. It's a thing. But, so, yeah, it just it seems to complicate things. But now that Disney bought everything else, I guess they can, they can still do... They can do some interesting stuff there. So, mm-hmm. but we're not going to see any. 
I was actually really excited to see what they do with Symbiotes. America so. Chavez. Okay. That uh, is probably in the works. Yes. Sure. Miss Marvel. I want oh, wait, Riri no. Williams. You got it. Iron Heart. Yeah. She's there. Legacy uh, characters. Who takes over for Thor? Uh, Who takes over for Hawkeye? Oh, well, uh, what's her face? Kate. Ba- ba- uh, Beta Ray Bill. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's like Thor, but with the ha- he's horse, a horse head. head. Yeah. <laughs> he's there. Uh, That's good. Instead of uh, Hulk, we got Amadeus Cho. That's right. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Who wants Hulk with a little bit of Asian flair? I do. Okay. No, we're I think pants that there's change a chance with they could take Valkyrie Smart. and try to do some like. She Thor stuff with her. Sure. Mm. Well, there is. Or there Jane is, Foster becomes yeah, Jane, Thor. They're, they're uh, going to get. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to get Natalie Portman yeah, back to play Thor. There uh, is a female Thor comic book, but it's just yeah. it's just alternate Thor. Or Jane is, Foster. No, she's, oh, she's Jane Foster. She took over the mantle. Oh. She's imbued with the power of Thor. Okay. I think we could see an Iron Man becoming a Jarvis type. Just a robot. Just oh. a robot that oh, yeah. gives them guidance and Robert Danny Jr. voices. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's three hours in the VO booth. He'd love it. That's okay. it. Seventy million dollars. Seventy million dollars. <laughs> I think you guys are sleeping on Shang Chi, the master of kung fu. That's happening. Say what? Yeah. Miss Marvel, the little girl, the Pakistani girl. Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we keep the saying kid. more names. I know most of them. <laughs> keep going. The yeah. kid from Iron Man three who was at Tony Stark's funeral. Oh, God. oh yeah, right. someone had a. Oh, that's that who he was. Yeah. Oh, uh, you were yeah, dude, no right? idea. Okay. I was like, I don't know who that kid is. I that's what I something. assumed it was. If I don't, I'm like, rec- I don't know who else that child would be. If I don't recognize someone in the Marvel universe, I assume it's Thor: Dark World. Here's the question: When <laughs> they go, give. when they go back into time, dimension, whatever, and they pull out Quicksilver, which one is it? Is it the little twink from American Horror Story, or is it? Uh, the, the twink from uh, American Kick-Ass. American Horror Story, Evan Peters was the better Quicksilver, he was, and yeah. I know everyone's like, "What?" Because like when he first showed up on that Entertainment Weekly, he had goggles on his head sure. and his silver hair, and he looked stupid. But that Quicksilver is a way better Quicksilver than the Quicksilver. Maybe we, we got should just maybe. hire a third party, completely new Quicksilver. Yeah, oh. and if you need Anton Yelchin, if you needed help hiring that uh, new Quicksilver, you should use Zip oh, Recruiter. <laughs> Because uh, all you need is one place to go for all your hiring needs, ZipRecruiter. Hiring is challenging. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing review process. But there's one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates. That place is ZipRecruiter.com rooster. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards. But they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. Right now, Filmhouse listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. ZipRecruiter.com slash Rooster. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash R-O-O-S-T-E-R. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Rooster. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Thanks, ZipRecruiter, for bringing us here this week to talk about Avengers a lot more. Um, yeah, so... Parting thoughts? More Avengers? Did you get all your thoughts out on Avengers? I love it. I, 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 uh, well, I, I loved it. Yeah. I love Good. Captain America. Reluctantly, every single time anything related to Captain America ever happens, I always think, what a lame guy, because he's like this, this the Superman, the perfect guy. Yeah. But man, Soy do boy. I root for him. Cug. Man, is he a great <laughs> <protagonist>. <laughs> What about Ant Man? Oh, oh he's yeah. He's very great fun too. in this Got a movie. Time to shine. Yeah. Great. Loved it. Yeah. You Love can do them. anything. They, they've done a really good job over this entire franchise of taking characters that previously I never cared about. Even being a comic book fan as a kid, like Captain America, being like lame, lame mm-hmm. and giving him a pretty good arc. Mm-hmm. Same with it, Thor. It did yep. take a little while, Iron I think, too. for Captain America. I, yeah. I, they, they and did. Thor, yeah. That, I mean, Shit. most of these characters, for the most part, when we were reading comic books as kids, it was at least for me, it was always like, Batman's cool, X-Men are cool. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's pretty cool, Venom's awesome, and then everything else sucks. But that was also like, we're young and we just want edgy shit like Spawn. Mm-hmm. But well, X-Men was Marvel's prime time stuff when we were kids. No yeah. one gave a shit about that. Exactly. So when they announced, we're making an Iron Man movie, you sort of go, yawn, whatever, and they go, oh, it's actually pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. And everything else, they've made pretty, they did a pretty damn good job yeah, of up- yeah. keeping this stuff, making it updated and relevant now to the point where Iron Man as a household name is just freaking weird. Mind blowing. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Avengers is the interesting thing, and, it, and Wolverine is 
yeah. kind of not the most interesting part Everyone's of all the comic book movies. Asking where Adam Warlock is. <laughs> <laughs> Constant is. question. Every time I met my hairstylist, just the question: <laughs> Where's that Adam Warlock? She asks. Uh, <sighs> I do. I do think uh, Sony might grab back Spidey. I don't know what kind of deal yeah. they have, but um, Lord and Miller just closed a nine-figure, five-year deal with Sony to develop uh, their Marvel characters, which are all Spider-Man characters, for TV projects. Mm-hmm. So I think. Spidey's going to go back for a while. We'll see. Yep. That's how it goes. Um, Them's the deals. Until Disney buys Sony. So there you go. Enjoy that. Your mouse station or whatever you want to call it. Your, <laughs> the the mouse Mickey, house. Mickey Bravia. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't have any uh, release dates firm, but you know how studios hold on dates now. Um, there's two movies next year in 2020, one in May and one in November, that could be Black Widow and the Eternals. Uh, three dates in 2021, uh, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, maybe Guardians, mm-hmm. and then a couple, uh, three more dates in 2022. Uh, so they have dates on hold. We don't really, there are no firm plans. I think they're kind of going back to the drawing board after Endgame. Yeah. Which, do, yeah. does anyone, I think Infinity War is still better than this, than Endgame. Sure. I, you know, as this, a standalone movie, it's, yeah. it's way better. I, this is This to me feels like a... Two Towers, Return of the King type scenario. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I think Two Towers is a better standalone movie than Return of the King, but I think Return of the King has some shit in it that's fucking bonkers. It has some payoff, and it I has mean, some payoff. it has payoff because yeah. again, you can't have payoff in the in the not end movie right. of stuff. Yeah. Generally, it's a trilogy. In this case, it was two, but like you can't have payoff. You have to end with tragedy and question and yeah. and the opposite of payoff. You need I think the the payoff in Endgame is so worth the hour oh, and yeah. a half of sort of downtime, but then also I think in a weird way, you're gonna we're gonna come back and watch both movies back to back and cool. you're gonna realize you need that break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's sort of like you need that breathing room where I think the movie actually probably would have been a been a disservice to itself and what it had been building up for if it just when action, 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 when mm. they, you've never seen these characters lose this way before. So mm. that's, once again, it's all it's all silly comic book stuff that's being adapted into movies that you're talking about like you would a, you know, a serious motion picture type thing. But th- that's the sort of like care and uh, yeah, detail. They change blockbusters, man. I don't, yeah, I, that's the thing is like, they're, at the end of the day, these are movies being made by people who give a shit. And I appreciate that. I think it's really cool. I don't. I don't think it's going to change like <laughs> the Academy's mind on how movies are made or whatever. But it's still it's better than the stuff we had growing up. So that's why I'm like just super happy it exists. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking we could talk about Game of Thrones from this past weekend, but we are almost at an hour. Um, that's maybe. not a movie. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> like next just, week. Yeah, maybe next week. And then we'll have yeah, we'll have this Sunday's episode too. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Unless Did you all have trouble seeing it? No. no, I didn't at all. So I don't I, know what those people was, are bitching about. It was dark, but like from the from the trailer that we had seen for the season and the shots we had seen from that episode, like of Arya running through the crypts and stuff, I feel like we knew it was going to be like already in Free Folk, people were talking before the episode came out about how it was going to be darker. Like, I mean, no. it's called the Long Night. <laughs> I, just, I think if it was, it was cool. bright. I think that may have been weird. I know people were all people also were yeah. complaining about the. The banding and like what the blacks were doing, but You're that's such streaming. a. I mean, that's that's a big, way bigger issue. The calibrate for your television yeah. and your internet speed. Like, I'm pretty sure Game of like Game of Thrones at HBO picked a bit rate that they were like, this will play on everything, and, and everyone will be able servers. to watch it at six six p.m. PST on right. the dot, no questions asked, and then. Like it'll yeah. probably look better when you watch it again. Or if buy you a fucking Blu-ray. Well, yeah, I had it on DVR, but it would be nice if, with HBO Go or any one of those services, that you have that like a week later or some option to give you like a way to download the original. I mean, you'll you'll never get the uncompressed version of what it is, but like yeah, if you're watching that stuff on an OLED, yeah, it makes it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Or like I saw it on a movie screen, so I couldn't tell you about. I'm sorry, what? I saw it on a big movie screen. It was awesome. Where? How? Why? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay. He went to no. a place. Yeah. Oh, he knows. Uh, they had a writers' guild screening with a bunch of the crew. Oh, okay, you a writer? Was, yeah. Then what I the am. fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so I'm when I got you. when I got home and heard a bunch of people complaining about compression, I was mm-hmm. curious what they had to say. And, but I watched a little bit of it last night, and I don't know. 
I it's still think dark, but Helm's Deep. Awful. Helm's Deep is the best night battle sequence yeah. ever made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I, I would. Yeah, at some point we'll talk about it because it's. I'm still com like, still trying to decongest with all that information of like. And it's also it's not over, so there is a part of me that feels unfulfilled, and I have questions of like, why set up the Night King if you're just gonna do that? I yeah, don't the know. the existential dread's gone. So yeah, that, like, outward well, force is. Now, the, the, now, the, we're, now it's time for the less interesting the, thing. Yeah. The best way well, I yeah. saw it put was that the books are like, you know, dis distracted by the politics of the realm uh, while ignoring the real threat, which is the Night King. Whereas the show is distracted by like, the Night King, whereas ignoring hmm. the, the politics of the realm and the hmm. real threat. Like, like they're hmm. kind of flipped in their hmm. priorities is, is sort of how someone put it. And I was like, yeah, that actually kind of shows. But, but the thing is like, I feel like for the most part of of we've been watching this show, we've been watching it for the political intrigue mm -hmm. and machinations of all these different people within in this world. We haven't Not been the zombies. We haven't been watching it really. Like we've known but that they, that's threats looming. Th this is the first episode though. It's like they set up. They set oh, it up. There's so something. You think like so. bookending it would be the last thing, but I don't know. Like what we tune in for the show for hasn't been that specifically in the day to day of what we've liked about the show. And it's so like I'm kind of two seasons. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with it. Like now coming around to being about the stories we we've been following for however many years. It's, like it's your classic Ghostbusters two scenario. That's that's what we were, were all thinking at the end of that episode. It's this. It's the people's <laughs> relationships with one another in New York that causes the ooze to rise, mm -hmm. which then gives gives opportunity for the evil ones to do their evil deeds, but. They have to get the Statue of Liberty to make people happy again to depower the ooze enough that they can even get to the point where they can tackle the real threat, which in this case is King's Landing. Which Stark is Egon? Uh, Bran. Probably Bran. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, maybe we can put a link in the description, but I would actually, quick shout out, uh, our friends at Wisecrack did a really good video of their, like, Guess who will sit on the Iron Throne? Oh, cool. And they did a Check really great job because uh, this big reason I love their channel. They use philosophy and history um, as you know they're sort of the backbone of what how they sort of digest things and okay. dissect them in a way. A and lot of what of what he's done in Game of Thrones mm -hmm. is based on like War of the Roses and real. It's historic. a mix of like War of the Roses, yeah. um, Christian mythology, mm -hmm. and Nordic mythology. And I didn't know that with characters like that are Odin-esque or, uh, um, yeah, like Thor-esque and stuff like that, where it's just, it is a really nice mix of everything. Well, I, haven't but watched, I haven't watched that, but I did watch the the BTS doc on HBO that you told yeah. me to watch, and it was great. It was great, yeah. It was like a 40-minute, you, you want to tell them? No, no, it's free on HBO, but like, or sorry, on, making on YouTube. Episode? Yeah, it's a 40-minute making of it, and it's, it's really cool to see the, the thought yeah, process that went behind it where each act was a different genre. I think this is it. How it goes from like, what was it? it? It's like a horror movie at first. Then and survival then horror. Survival horror and then, then, action. And then action. And I was like, that's pretty cool. But yeah, like, it, it, I mean, I loved I just, watching this. I, I think I watched one of these for, do they do this for every episode? I don't know. I, There's a lot of them on the yeah. seasons. They used to do a thing at the end of each episode that I miss where they would interview the creators who would talk about what you just watched and what it meant. Yeah. Because we watch it. Okay. Well, they like do a scene breakdown. Or yeah. I, but I, this was like a whole other level. It's, mm -hmm. it's this thing. Check okay. it out. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's it. damn good. We'll neat. we'll throw some throw some links in there, but um, good the, movie. Darkness Falls about the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I thought it was neat that we had these like epic conclusions of these two you know decade long stories. Mm. Game of Thrones hadn't been quite that long, but within yeah. a couple of days of each other, we had these two climaxes. Yeah, and I was just overwhelmed by both of them. I mean, some of us had a third climax. Nice, <laughs> he jerked off yeah. <coughs> by myself. <laughs> That's generally ah. how it works. Yeah, um, but this the, this whole episode, what they say, it was like a three month shoot. Yeah, fifty five like, days, like, all overnights. Yeah, like no no breaks. No. Uh, it's freezing their asses off, like doing the stuff where it, it's kind of cool too. Where the actors are talking about like how they were getting exhausted and loopy, and it's sort of like every everyone on the set is like, I would never do this again. Yeah. I yeah, would, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't like frost it and say it was great. It's wonderful working with my friends. Everyone's like that. Fucking sucked. Yeah, yeah. But at, at the same time, too, it, it's a real shitty thing. It's it's like when uh, actors are actually like drowning or being choked on the set of the Abyss, and James Cameron's like more, more, and it's like you get a great performance, but holy shit, you're putting some people's lives in danger. And well, I was telling Dan yeah. about this the one like sketchy shot for Arizona Circle where we were in a very like foggy room. Oh yeah, and. 
I mean, it was really hard. It was really hard, and people were legitimately not feeling well because of all the haze we had in, in there. And I was didn't choking. Seem to notice. And Chris Maris is a robot, so he was he was like, I'm actually thriving, thriving yeah. on this. But you guys power through because you're on an HBO internet show. Well, not show. me. I was directing, so I just I was the one shouting more, more, <laughs> yeah, more like, haze. Do it again. in another room. Smog them. Yeah. <laughs> more haze. Yeah. What did oh. Quentin Tarantino do to Uma Thurman that she like didn't forgive him or whatever? Put her in a car that wrecked. Yeah. But you have to, especially more. for the the crew, you have to hand it to them for being able to do such a great job oh, yeah. in those kind of conditions and not get the thanks that Amelia Clark got. When she was probably getting kind of pampered. Yeah. But well, she had an aneurysm. Give her a break. Did she? Two, I think. Two, Two like first yeah. Season. yeah. I didn't hear about this at all. Yeah. I mean, and I know what her breasts quiet. look like, unlike you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I close my eyes for those parts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was so good. Um, maybe we can talk about it some more soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 I kind of, yeah, I want to see how the whole season plays out before I make any judgments. Because I'm like, I don't know. It, it, it felt, everything felt to end so fast. And I'm like, there has to be something, right? They, they're not just going, and we're done with that storyline, moving on. Like, I don't know, right? I don't, I don't know. know. It's the end. Man. Where, where did Bran go? It's like where a, was a it? fifty to... hour story, and you're talking about the last three hours of it. I just, I feel like what we watched though was like what you see in the the sixth episode of a six episode season, not the third one, right? Like, but, but just like I how, don't know. how Return of the King had an hour of endings. Mm-hmm. Because it was such a long story, we oh. this is the end of Endgame. Yeah, of this. Clegane Bowl yeah. is coming. There's yeah, they're, they're I was just I was so that. ready to be disappointed, and I wasn't at all. all right. hmm. Once again, I, there there was just that empty Good feeling point. I have at the end of like, oh, that's it, we're done with that part. <laughs> Not, I know a lot of people are saying like. It should have been Jon Snow doing the big fight. That didn't bother me so much. It didn't really matter who the that's the a person good was. subversion of your expectations. Well, like, I, I mean, they, they set up. They've been setting up Arya for the so beginning. Many, since the beginning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And actually, I really like where Arya's at, and like that was always my thing. Well, I was always very excited to see her as a badass, and she's a total badass. Which I was like, she's worked toward it. Exactly. And like that, that didn't bother me. It was just they set up this really interesting mythology and this interesting character, and we didn't get anything of like why him why did the children of the forest make him that and like and a lot of people have a problem with that that's what the tv show that's coming is going to explain oh maybe i hope hope or you can read the books no i can't well yeah he's not he's not a character at all in the book that's what that's a very interesting thing to me Hmm. is that they don't personify the white walkers with one villain leader in those books well there's mythology about the night king the night king a night king Yeah. yeah I just think that there were lots of questions people were hoping this would answer, like Adam was saying, like about who the Night King is, where they came from, why. And we people are upset because they didn't get any of, the, any of those answers. And I don't know if, if we ever will, or if they're just saving so. them for the prequel. I think yeah. there's a difference, for me at least, there's a difference between shows that ask questions, like Lost, and then don't necessarily give satisfying answers or don't give any answers at all. Yeah, that's good and then point. shows yeah. that don't ask questions and just present something. And, people and then read people go, but what's questions. what's the rest of that? What's the Wikipedia there? article there? Yeah. Sure. Like I, I, I never felt like Game of Thrones was like, what's his deal? Mm, no, I, mm, well, like, I thought what <laughs> Game of Thrones does really well is it sets up characters that are not just surface level. And then they have this villain that end up just being kind of surface level. Yeah. There are few black and white characters, or none, in the story Almost. except for the Night King. Yeah, and th- th- that that was my that was my feeling of it, it, I don't know. It's like it, it's just going to a, a hometown buffet and then leaving. That feeling, you know. You want to live there forever. <laughs> <laughs> just want to look at the the Norman Rockwell paintings and think, why? Why does this place stay in business? I like Brienne, but from the very start of that fight, she screamed like a like she was terrified. <laughs> she was like. Ah! <laughs> She's so tough for the rest of it. As soon as she gets hit the first time, she goes, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't we, sorry, we, we talked about it too long. The episode's gone too long. I'm so yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to That's drink the sun. How dare you, Adam? I'm sorry. I love I love, I love, love all the stuff we watch <laughs> as friends, right? I, I'm not I told you, I told you, you would know. Together. Oh, oh yeah. now I know. Not you. I was to Elise. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> Say my name, Elise. I knew we were friends years ago. You call? What's the name I told you you call me? Uh, I called well, you. Well, that's on the end of the joy. episode, right, Dan? <laughs> Adam Warlock. Oh, oh. Adam Warlock! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. Thanks I'm for officially coming. Officially changing by. my name. <laughs> what would happen if you went to Vormir without a second your best person? friend or love you your life? You have to cut off your penis. <laughs> yeah, you cut off your dick, I'll leave. And just throw it <laughs> and cut it off. It's what if you're a woman? Yeah. Leg out. Like you, you got, got the same You got half your nacho bone, and he's like throwing the nachos off. You love it. I need that soul stone. I guess. 
<laughs> that maybe would have made it a little bit